is going on everybody happy wednesday happy mid-december how's your christmas shopping going how's yours going <sighs> i don't start till like the 23rd Ah, uh, typical boy yeah well you're 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 done i'm already done you're done <laughs> what'd you get like done in october <laughs> are you a big black friday cyber monday gal Oh, someone just Dang. sold an oil. <laughs> oh, that's the noise it makes. Uh, that's my yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I I am unfortunately my bank account suffers mightily. You're a kind, generous person. What do you mean? Well, oh, buying presents for people. Thank well, you. if your bank account suffers, it does. Are you not a Black Friday shopper? No, I'm like a <laughs> December twentieth shopper. Yeah, I'm really bad at. It. You don't even buy for yourself on Black Friday. No. Oh. I buy for myself 365 days a year, you know. Yeah. I think if I, 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 if I need something, I just buy it. I get it. Well, that's good. I try to be, you know, smart with my money. I know. My but... dad's like, you don't have to buy it just because it's on sale. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, great. Um, I hope everyone's having a, a really great day. Rochelle and I were uh, out fundraising for cystic fibrosis last, last night. late into the night. At late into the night, our, our my dear friend Demi helped helped um, as she is a big fan of the uh, drag queen community. Yeah, it was at Hamburger Mary's Drag Queen Bingo. It was fun. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Uh, there was it was Cougar. City. There were so many cougars hitting on. They were all from like Calabasas there's and they were a, hitting on Nick. There's it was a group so of young funny. lady that were mesmerizing Rochelle. They <laughs> were take they were entertaining. Off. It was a fun dynamic. You uh you thought there was a cute young man there that you know. I have a crush on uh he's a scientist in my uh volunteer group. You left for five minutes, you came back and you said to me very cryptically, Well, I tried. <laughs> And I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> and then we kept playing bingo. What do you, what did what do you mean you tried? <laughs> I I keep I keep putting the vibes out, you know. So but last year I would always ask people. I'd be very forward okay. with guys I liked, and it Just never worked out. I'd be like, "Hey, we get along. You're cute. Let's go out." And they would yeah. always say no. <laughs> like to see your face. <laughs> yeah. So I took a step back, and now I'm trying to. Do I don't mean to laugh, but you're laughing the way you say it, and you're just describing a guy going, "Yeah, no." <laughs> That's basically Come on. what happened. I'm not. No lying. way. Yes. Uh, okay. So now I took a step back, and I'm trying to just put vibes out, okay. you know. And that's not working either. But you gotta keep trying. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. He's an English scientist. He works in a lab. An English? He's English who's a scientist? Or he's yeah. a scientist who studies the English language? <laughs> no, he's from England. Oh, he's got a British accent. Yeah. I, I wanted to get a, look, get a look at this guy without knowing his voice, because I wonder how much, like, is he, like, a seven who looks like a nine because he's British when he talks? Or, you know I, what I'm saying? Like, how much is the British accent? Oh, like, how hot is he? Well, the British accent, how much does that help? It's more the scientist that I'm into. Ooh. Yeah. What is he signed? He's his trying to cure cystic fibrosis. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Your dream. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like a superhero. Wait, was this the, is this wasn't the gentleman who spoke uh, at no. the other foundation, no. doctor no. at UCLA? No, he was cute too, though. Yeah. He was married. Yeah. <laughs> they all are. Uh, and so you kind of put out your vibes. I'm doing a vibe push and he's just what not he's just not, not pretending to notice or well when i and do you know he's single he, yes he got a yeah i do <laughs> he was in a very toxic relationship he's in yeah he I, said this to you yeah when uh when i interviewed him to be in the group we you interviewed him yeah position of power i am in a position of power yes <laughs> Don't i'm the leader of the that. group yeah okay. that's true i might be overstepping my i probably not what if you, what if you, this is the risk of friend zone, but like you could just like ask him to hang out more like in a non-date uh, situation. One-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, like what it's do you do It's hard he always later? has to like feed his cells. He's got to what? Feed the cells at, in the lab. That's the excuse he gives me a lot. He's got to go feed the cells. Jeez, he's got to feed the cells? <laughs> He's like, I can't. Got to go feed the cells. So You've that could be a line. Out. Yeah. 
Okay. I don't think it's going to happen. You don't think it's going to happen. Well, to prioritize your, t- uh, to, to pass your time when he's feeding your cells, are you playing a lot of Best Fiends? I am playing a lot of Best Fiends. You know it. When you don't have a boyfriend, you still have Best <laughs> you, Fiends. You still have Best Fiends. Yeah. Colorful characters, cute, wonderful, exercising your brain. It's amazing. I'm getting much better at it. Good. Yeah. I know you had me worried for a little bit. It's getting to be really enjoyable to play. It's so fun. It, I think you always need to have a fun game on your phone just to pass the time when you're bored, when you're stressed. Totally. And ideally, you learn from it. Exactly. It's good for you to play. I've played other games where it's just like, I definitely got dumber. Yeah. But not with Best Fiends. My favorite part are is the bright colors and the bugs. You can help them grow. They change their costumes and you got to defeat the slugs. It's super fun. It's cute. <laughs> no, it is. I just... I, I just find like i'm i get better and better at it so which means i feel like i'm getting smarter and smarter because i, know, I feel like my, I'm, I'm becoming more i don't know what the word is but i yeah. guess just smarter yeah anyways i don't know you can engage your brain too with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters as rochelle has just described trust me with over 100 million downloads this five star rated mobile puzzle game is a must play download best fiends free on the apple app store or google play that's best friends without the r best fiends Rochelle, you're looking great thank you all thanks to noom all oh, thanks to noom trying to get that new year new me started right <laughs> But it's I, true. I, I think you're doing great. I think this high. I like this high ponytail you have going on. There's a. <laughs> it's like a spunky Rochelle who is just it, uh, is it different? who just uh, got off her Noom. Yeah. You know, used her Noom in the morning. Noom. It's an app for your phone. You spend about ten minutes a day on it. You log your food. They teach you how to change your habits with food, and you get a support group. And it's just like if you're feeling like you want to feel better in your skin and feel healthier, this is the perfect step. I totally agree. Every time I try to make a change in my diet or just health routine, it's it's you do you really feel like you're uh, alone. You know, you'll get this idea, you'll like download something on the internet, and that like. And it's so easy to cheat. Noom really helps cheat. you st- yes. stick with it, right? Yes. Like with the community and just being able to always check in. Yes. You kind of ha- you know, create those habits with going to the app and getting that information. Exactly. It's very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful. We're a mess today. Let's keep that in. Anyways, uh, you don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Or, Rochelle... Shavings make a pile. <laughs> Shavings make a pile. I'm sorry Sign to sound up like Sean for your Connor. trial today at Noom. N O O M dot com slash V I A L L. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash V I A L L to start your trial today. That's Noom dot com slash V I A L L. The last weight loss program you'll need. Gary Gennetti was very fun. He was more than fun. I really enjoyed my time with with Gary. For those of you who don't know, uh, Gary is our friend of show Brad's husband. Uh, Brad Graski. Yes, Brad. I feel like Brad's on a first name basis at this okay. point on our show. All right. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Gary is the Gary's the more successful one in the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I like to joking. But Brad's yeah. very successful. He's yeah. killing it. Uh, Gary is so, he's smart and successful. He writes for Family Guy. He used to be the showrunner for Will and Grace. uh, And he's the author of the new and very entertaining book, Do You Mind If I Cancel? I love this book. We'll get into why I love this book with Gary. Uh, He's funny, entertaining. Um, He's just a delight. And I I learned a lot from him about his life and perspective. And um, I don't know. It was just a fun conversation about uh, life and his, his journey and him writing the book. And you know, what we learn about ourselves as we grow up and looking back on our lives, it was just uh, fascinating for me. I liked what he said. He talks about thinking everyone else is going to plan your life for you Mm -hmm. and that that everyone else is going to give you this amazing opportunity. He had to realize he had to create it for himself and that he had permission to do that. Yeah. I really, really And I think that, that, yeah, that's a very relatable life lesson. I think most people don't really learn that to like much later than they thought they would right, right. <laughs> you know yeah it's a uh, anyways i really enjoyed it i think you guys will too uh definitely check out gary's book do you mind if i cancel uh it's on uh, audible you can buy it on amazon it's a uh, fantastic but before that i really hope you enjoy this podcast and this show and i know i did don't forget to rate us five stars uh 
I feel like we could use some. Oh, by the way, Rochelle, congratulations. Congratulations to you. Uh, and also congratulations to you listeners. Yes. Uh, the Vile Files, and something I am very proud of, was selected by iTunes as uh, 2019's uh, most popular new shows. There weren't many shows listed. There were not. As well as we just found out that Associated Press yes. also selected Vile Files. Top podcast of the year. Uh, as top podcast of the year. And thanks to all you people listening. Couldn't do it without you. Truly. I mean, I'm really, I'm all serious, I'm very proud of the show that we've created and it's really, it means a lot that you guys um, listen and that you like it and you, you give us feedback and I feel like we've built a community. It's been a lot of fun. I hope bigger things for us in 2020, but I do want to say thank you to all of, all of you who are listening. Uh, it, it does mean a lot and something uh, I know Rochelle and I are very proud of. So, so thank you very much. Um, Nick works really hard on this podcast, and it shows. I mean, I like I like you guys. You know, I like talking to my friends. I don't have a, a girlfriend. I just have my listeners. That sounds so depressing. Don't say <laughs> that. Then, meanwhile, five stars, if you please. Uh, I need your validation. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. And without further ado, Gary Janetti. Gary Janetti, thank you for coming. No, well, thanks for having. So me, nice guys. to have you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Gary is friend of show Brad's husband. That's, That's how right. I got to know Gary. That's right. And, I, and then I come to realize that Brad is like married to, Brad's like, I, Brad, I see Brad as like this great guy, successful. Brad's kind of like the, the second fiddle in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him that. We'll keep it I between us. I say that as a friend. That we'll keep it between <laughs> us and our entire audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gary is a, incredibly successful. Like there's first when I heard about you, you were you had this amazing meme account of which it was all about the royal family, which is like I, I find out is super successful and yeah. wildly popular. It and like is. so many people like, oh yeah, the guy who has the Prince George. Yeah, the Prince George account. Yeah. And then I find <laughs> out that you you know you're the successful writer and then oh it turns out because I know some people in the family guy f- franchise that oh wait, you were you were uh, the showrunner for that for a while. I didn't, I wasn't you, a showrunner. You, were showrunner, for you worked family for him? Guy. Uh, Will and Grace I was. You were the showrunner fa- for Family Guy I've been on since the beginning on and off. Okay. For, so, so you worked for Family Guy. Then you're the showrunner for Will and, Will and Grace. You just you're a rock star out here. Thanks, Nick. You, and you've done so many things. I recently had the pleasure of of listening uh, to to Gary's new book. Um, Do you mind if I cancel? Which is a great title, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I like how, that. how did you come up with that title? I don't know. I was with I was uh, talking with my book editor James Millia, who's uh, a great guy, and I just said I think the title for the book is Do You Mind If I Cancel? And he was like, I love it. So I'm like, okay, great. It's so like passive aggressive i had the title before i knew what i was gonna write but i was like i've got a title it's it's really something it's really great and how would you describe the book from your point of view it's a bunch of short stories about your life yeah Yeah, it's it's essays it's autobiographical essays about like my childhood and young adulthood all all the 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 point in my life where i felt where i was lost before i knew how to figure out i I, it took me a while to figure things out. That's you know? how I, that was kind of my takeaway, which I thought was really interesting. And a lot of we talk about on the show is is perspective, and I think sometimes even my audience will uh, accuse me of coming across as sometimes condescending when I try to share perspective because the biggest takeaway of my life so far is things I thought about life in the past, and as you get older, you think differently. Yeah. And that was the biggest takeaway immediately from your book. Uh, as soon as I started listening to it, um, to me, that's what it was about a, a book about perspective. And you had a line in the book, uh, the book, it, it escapes me, but it was just about looking at things differently now or, or how you were in the past and kind of making fun of yourself. And towards the end of the book, my absolute favorite part, and I listened to it twice, was your letter to Gary. Oh, thanks. I love that you listened to it twice. It was, it was a great book because I feel like, then I thought to myself, everyone needs to do this. But it was, um, I thought of it almost literal where, what if we could do this, but you can't? Clearly, like I, I was yeah, listening. The letter to my younger self. Yes. And I was listening to, to this, file. the younger self. I'm like, I can't wait till younger Carrie reads this. And I'm Aww. thinking to myself, shit, that can't happen. He, yeah. right? like, <laughs> he is kind of too. But it is, yeah, it was that kind of idea of, you know, if I, what I could say to myself when I was a kid, like 13 years old. But 
comically, you know, all the ridiculous things. And I was writing about all the ridiculous things, you know, all my kind of OCDE kind of things that I do now, the things that I obsess about, kind of preparing myself for all of the, you know, the ridiculousness. And then, yeah, and then as I was writing it, it was kind of like, but what's the real truth of it too? What else, what what truthfully would you want to say to yourself? So it kind of does get a little bit more you know, real, you know, honest. No, it, it felt like, again, I listened to it on Audible. I didn't read it. And I think if you are going to, you should read Gary's book. But if you listen to him and read it, I think it makes it even richer from your point of view. That's just man. my opinion. But um, I, I, I was really... I was really in the moment listening to it because it felt like such a sincere letter to yourself. And when you oh. think about it, it was like a really sweet, touching thing. I, then I felt about a little bit of sadness that like younger you couldn't read it. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it all worked out, you know, <laughs> yeah. it work out, you know. But wouldn't that but... be great, though, if you could get a note? What would you tell your younger self? <sighs> That's a good question. I need to think about it. But think about it. chill out. You know? Yeah, that's a big fucking note, by the way. Yeah. To say to Spe- younger like, self, relax. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty five and under Nick, just man, who cares? Oh, yeah, I know. Who fucking cares, man? It's it's uh yeah. A little bit a lot of I mean a lot more, but what could you imagine if we could do that? And what would you do if you got a note and you knew it was actually from you? It's I know it's a very it's like a black mirror episode. Would you listen like yeah, tech, right? Do you watch Black Mirror? On I've Netflix? seen it, yes. Okay. Yeah. I feel like now we'd get a text. It would be because it's all about technology. Yeah. It'd be like, what if you could text your younger self? You know, mm. that kind of thing. Would you? Would you? Would you texts. Would although there were no texts. Would when you were kids. Okay. Would Would you knowing that it's it's a fact. It's a fact that you. It's proven that this is older Gary. Yeah. And you get it. Would younger Gary listen to older Gary? <laughs> I think he would have felt better. Okay. I think he might have felt a little better, but I think younger Carrie would be frustrated about how many years he'd have to wait <laughs> and all the shit he was still going to have to go through and stuff because you want things to happen now. So while something's comforting, you know, like even when it's like it's like the equivalent of when you tell young people now who are being bullied on in school mm-hmm. or having a hard time and you know, it's it's easy to say, you know, it's going to get better or don't hang in there all, all those kind of stuff, but when you're in it, it's like it's it, every day is a year Year, you know, things go on. It seems impossible almost. So it's almost in, in some way, I feel like it's a hard thing to even be able to go back and tell somebody that without they still have to get through the day to day kind of thing. Yeah. You know, how old were you when you feel like you finally were truly comfortable with with yourself and kind of how old were you feel like your rest of your life kind of really began? Okay. I can answer that instantly. 18. 18. It like I I had no it's so it's so strange but I had almost the word the exact words you used when I graduated from high school and I remember when I graduated from high school I went to St. Francis Prep in Queens and my parents had an opportunity they were my dad worked for a cruise line which is in the book and they then my parents were like oh we're going to go on this cruise to Alaska but it's during your high school graduation kind of a thing. And do you mind if we went or we're not there? And I didn't really have any friends in high school. I was, I just wanted to get through it. And I, and I was anything that didn't shine a light on it. I was happy that they weren't there. So I went to my high school graduation um, with my sister and then I, she had to go to work and I went home alone from my high school graduation on the city bus because I lived in Queens. And I remember sitting on that bus like it was yesterday and thinking, and now my life will begin on my way home from it. Like clearly having that thought. So to answer your question, and it did from that day, it was almost like I, I, I knew it was like I had to get through this and now it will begin. And then when I went to college, I was popular. I had a lot of friends. I came out during college. I had boyfriends. I had a, I had a, the life that you probably should have in high school. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like this kind of case of arrested development a little. So then, and I talk about it in my book too, when you get, when I get into my 20s, it's like, then it, it kind of made it hard for me to figure out anything else, you know, like how a career, what do I want to do? How do you achieve these things? Because I was playing catch up with the things that I didn't get to do you know, when I was younger and I was enjoying that stuff. But at a certain point in your 20s, you start off and it's like you're having fun and you're going out mm-hmm. and you're meeting people. And I was a part of, you know, the scene or whatever it is. You know, I, I had the trendy jobs where I got to go out and I knew people in restaurants and clubs and all of these things. And then as you get further on in your 20s, 
you're kind of like, what am I doing? What, what, what's going to happen to me? You know, what's my, <laughs> you know, what, how do I make what I want to happen happen? Like it felt like I was on the outside of everything and I didn't know how to get in. So 18 is when my life began. But when I figured out what to do with my life, that took another 10 years. Okay. That, and that's kind of, I was wondering too, because, you know, li- you know, listening to your book, it was, it, you know, you listen to it and it was a lot of, you could tell all these stories was about you kind of figuring out what you wanted yeah. to do. And, you know, we get so many callers who are listening and I know I related when I was younger, this, your twenties is like, I always say that you spend most of your twenties trying to live up to the expectations you made for yourself when you were a teenager, which is kind of bizarre because what do you know as a teenager? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. And we spent all our twenties trying to like, fulfill these like fantasies that we had all meanwhile kind of still figure out what you really want to do it's, yeah. it's a wild thing and, and it's not until your late 20s usually where you kind of settle in like this is the thing i actually want to do that i have a passion for that i want to do on a regular basis and it's stressful to and you put right. a lot of pressure on yourself and then how do you even follow that and what does that mean and you never learn those things you know there's nobody to you know i i worked every terrible job in New York. And also I, you know, I started working as soon as you could work when you were 16, because we had to get a job, you worked. It wasn't like, you know, I didn't come from a, a you know, a, Is that the grocery a, store. Yeah, the grocery store. I didn't come from a background where you could have a choice not to work. You know, you needed I needed to work and to help subsidize all the, the things you wanted to buy. And then when I went to college, I always had to work, you know, and um, so there was never a time where I didn't have a job. But when I moved to Manhattan and I started working, you know, I knew I wanted to be a writer and an actor. I kind of didn't know what it meant or how to pursue it or if I was good enough. All those those voices you hear in your head, you know, that you kind of try to quiet. And But I would, my delusional mentality was like, I'll get a job in a trendy hotel. At the time, it was the Paramount Hotel in New York, which was the, the beginning of boutique hotels. Everybody stayed there. Just to get a job there was like, you know, being a movie star in my mind. And then I thought, and I'll be surrounded by people who worked in the entertainment industry, and they work in film, and they work in fashion, and they work in soap operas, and, you know, everything. They all came through the hotel. And I'm like, so if I, if I get a job there, somebody will discover me. You know, and if I put myself in front of the right people, they'll know what to do with me kind of a thing. You know, like I don't need to get involved in that. Just put yourself <laughs> in front of, you know, be modest. Yeah. And then somebody will be like, excuse me, Gary, could you? I don't know. I'm sorry. This is going to sound crazy. But would you want a contract role on all my children? <laughs> me? Would I? Oh, my God. I never thought of it before. But if you think I could I could do that, I'd love to do that. Sure. You know, there's this bizarre backwards thinking, you know, would you do you want to be in a movie? Are you a writer by chance? I actually am a writer. Oh, my God. Well, I work for The New Yorker. Do you have any short story? I do. You know, this sense of like you put yourself in the right place and then everything else will take care of itself. Like nobody fucking cared about me who work came into the hotel. It was like I was there to carry luggage. Nobody was concerned with my welfare, what my future was in the 10 minute interaction they had with me, obviously. Yeah, well, it's almost the opposite too, yeah, right? Especially in those industries, there's kind of like, it's hard to uh, get there and people who do want to protect that and they know- Some people do. Some too. Some people are very helpful. Some people run into it and it's like- there's there's two ways. You either reach a hand down or you <laughs> kick yeah. the hand. You know, yeah. I believe in you know you you help. There's room. There's room for everybody. You know, there's there's there is no there's not a finite amount. Believing yourself, success. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, but no, I- in that circumstance, it w- I was kind of like shy about what it is I wanted to do or or didn't know how to be an active participant in my life. I just felt like, just put yourself in the right place and then it will present itself as if by magic, somebody was going to, you know, and I think that's not an uncommon thing with young people because oh, since I've written the book, so relatable. many yes. people in there, you know, and I'm obviously not in my 20s anymore now, I'm middle-aged, but I'm writing about the time in my 20s, which was a different time than it is now and a bit jealous of, you know, how millennials, I, I, I which I love because I think they have so many opportunities now and i think it's a freer kind of generation and uh, um 
which is a wonderful thing. But I have a lot of people since I've written this book in their 20s coming up and saying how much they relate to it. It's exactly what they're going through, the kind of thing. And I think that never changes. If you're honest about that that time in your life where you feel so lost and you kind of are, have this ridiculous notion of how things are going to happen and you, you kind of need to figure it out. And I think you know, that I, I like that to know that people are, st it still connects with people as opposed to somebody saying like, oh my God, I have no idea how you could feel like that. I feel nothing like that oh, now. Things are so different now. Totally. And that's what's funny. The, the, the book, it's, it's a different time and it's actually nostalgic to hear about the times like, you know, your first job at the grocery store, how you just like kind of gave it all yeah. for free or, or yeah. you'd go home with magazines and it was yeah, like, it was like the magazines was, were like my magazine rack. I never thought of it as stealing. You're literally, you're totally no, stealing. And I no took every, cared. every like 50, $50 worth of magazines home a week. Like, oh, they uh, were, they didn't cost as much then, but, but I was like, you know, what it, TV guide, people magazine, us magazine. <laughs> my mother likes ladies home journal. I'll get that for her. Oh, is life so Okay. magazine i don't read it but i'll bring it home you know like, you would totally like be this. in jail yeah, yeah but nobody thought that, you know we just would walk out with them so in that regard it's nostalgic but to your point it's like it, it it does it is a kind of a timeless story and i think it's enjoyable it's an easy read easy listen for anyone but if you're like 18 to 30 and you're in your 20s and you have anxiety about the stresses of figuring out your life for yourself, you should absolutely check out the book because it really is so relatable in that sense. It's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the only one. Uh, yeah, it's a nice thing to know you're not the only one. And by you the have way. all these stories. In fact, when you're reading the story, you're like, wow. Another great story where he hasn't figured it out yet. <laughs> it's like when is he gonna? I know. Like, when does he get to the part of like being the showrunner for Will and Grace? It doesn't ha yeah, you know, I think it. Yeah, it doesn't happen in it. No, it's, but that's not interesting to read about people once they've already kind of are doing their thing, unless it's like this some kind of tell-all kind of thing, which is like a different. Thing. Yeah, but it's important to note like what you have accomplished, knowing that you don't get to that part of the story. But like, oh, he went through all this, like. Wow. Like, yeah, you know, I'm I, glad so many people thing. like and we get callers. We'll have our callers on, on Ask Nick and it's 23, 24, 25. And some of them talk as if like, well, it's the rest of her life and it's over. Not over, but like, well, this is the life I've chosen for myself. Right. And I have a I don't necessarily love it, but, you know, here I am. So how do I make the most of this life? Yeah. And I'm like, just start over change do do something different people are not always easy sometimes in situations no, but i i think people also are so afraid of failure and so afraid of being embarrassed by it or humiliated by it or i'll fail and what will that mean what will i'll find out i'm a fraud or i can't or i'm not good enough and rather be confronted with that i will put it away and go forward with this thing that i'm not crazy about because it's easier than actually putting your making yourself vulnerable to fail yeah you know but once you fail it was like that. I even say in my twenties, I was like, I wouldn't ask somebody out because I was like, what if they said no? I'm like, who cares if somebody says no? It's like there's doesn't matter. But it's like the idea of getting past that, and it's like I fail all the time. I still fail at things, and it sucks when you fail and something doesn't work out. And it's like, but once you once you allow yourself to fail, that's the only way you succeed. And and um. That's a, that can be a hurdle, I think, a lot of times for young people to get over, especially now. I yeah. think I didn't have social media reflecting a world to me that seemed perfect. I mean, obviously, the idea of social media is you want to pr put your best foot forward with it, you know, so but it can give a skewed reality to people, making it feel like you're if you already feel like you're on the outside of something, it could make you perhaps feel more, you know, on the outside of it. And you just have to be like, oh, yeah, this is all curated and everybody oh, curates I, their, their thing. There's not a time I don't find like go on social media and within 10 minutes, literally feel like an outsider i do i have that uh, like you feel fomo you know that fear of missing out or everyone's having fun but me or yeah. why am i doing this you see people like on the other side of the country going to a thing it it it, it never doesn't give me anxiety even still yeah the, yeah you should yeah then be on it less i yeah no i try to because <laughs> it's also it's just kind of like silly i think it's like we we put import sometimes on things that you know it's like okay everybody need, everybody needs to give themselves a fucking break and can i is that okay yeah. please oh yeah by the way now that you say that uh 
Gary's an am- amazing swear. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's my favorite thing I think anybody's ever said about. It's uh, there. I think there's a there's a way to do it. Is uh, I think there is. There is an art. There's an art. Um, Thank you. I don't think you I've mastered be. that art. I, I think, think sometimes can, right, I will help you. But you, I think. Correct me if I'm. And you tell me. But like, your book isn't riddled with you swearing. It was perfectly timed. When you do, it felt like it really had the desired impact. I think sometimes I'll do it too much. But when you did it, it really was like. Fuck yeah. Or, you know, like, I don't know. When you were, there was a, a uh, have you won an Oscar? No, no, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> because the, yeah, one have, of my favorite but lines. But there is one there's where a line, I, my Oscar speech you were, is in it. You were bullied by a guy in, 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 in school. Yes. And you were talking, about, you looked him up. I, one of my favorite, you would talk about how you looked people up yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, this is, I mean, I, I, I kind of... Um, you know, that's not exactly what happened in real life, sure. but I kind of, you know. But the way he life. said, <laughs> that's the way you you swore was like, that was a great use of the F word. Thanks. That's a delicate. Yeah, if you're going to, it's a good word. How have use. you, uh, any any notes you could give us out there for, for really not overdoing it, but when you do it, really have an impact? You know, yeah, save it for when, if it, <laughs> save it for when it really, you get the most bang for your buck, yeah. you know what I mean? When you get the most value out of it or something. That makes a lot of sense. I, yeah. And I feel like I know that, but I don't always do that. And then, yeah, and sometimes it's, and then you can repeat it sometimes too, enough times and then know when to pull back and kind of, I, I, I try not to rely on it too much. Bomba sucks, Rochelle. God, you're, you know, I'll tell you what. Your fashion game since this podcast started through the roof. <laughs> through it started pretty low, so there's only up from there. Through the roof, and I gotta say, socks go a long way to really completing any outfit. It's true because you want to treat yourself. I mean, look at you, you have these adorable yellow shoes on, and then Thank bam, you. popping with these very cute ankle socks that have a subtle baby blue stripe and a yellow that perfectly matches your shoes so, thank you they're so cute and just with that alone is just like this girl really she knew how to dress herself today yeah it looks like i put in a lot of effort and i didn't and yet you look very comfortable but also stylish it's the best way to go it's just it like, is. anyways all thanks to bomba socks bomba socks i will never buy other socks they're so comfortable cushiony they have no-show socks that don't slip. They have really warm merino wool merino wool socks. The don't, don't slip is the most important. Don't slip. Oh, They're very god. hard to find those. Oh my god. And a lot of people say they don't slip and then they do slip. Yep. Not Bombas. Not Bombas. Anyways. And I'm buying them for my dad for Christmas. Don't tell him. I'm, I'm a little offended your dad doesn't listen. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm glad he doesn't listen. Uh, good, great socks are, are hard to find and, and ones that are, are very affordable. You can't beat that. And as Rochelle said, uh, as you get older, you appreciate good socks Yep. for the holidays. Yep. Go to bombas.com slash V I A L L today and get 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash V I A L L B O M B A S dot com slash V I A L L bombas.com slash V I A L L proactive. Listen. Your kids, they're in school. Sometimes they get a pimple. It sucks. I remember being a teenager and getting pimples. It was awful. Proactive is kicking ass in the acne prevention game. Are they not, Rochelle? They are because they give you a routine to follow so you don't have to buy one thing from one brand, one thing from the other brand. They figured it out for you. All you have to do is follow the regime. And they've been on the forefront of this for for years. Like they're they're cutting edge technology when they it comes do. They, to acne prevention. They now have Adapalene, which is the newest acne fighting innovation made available to over the counter consumers in over 30 years. It's an awesome topical retinoid, which I use. It just helps, you know, get that skin turned over. I sure. wish I had Proactive when I was a teenager. Oh, me too. Are you kidding me? There was a good, yeah, a good 18 month period where I never not had a pimple. And like, I never, I was lucky enough I didn't yeah. suffer from severe acne, but yeah. like, man. Oof. 16 to like 17 and a half. I'm sure it was real rough for you. Every day. Like, what the fuck? Oh, I just got rid of... Oh. <laughs> and I really wanted... I, re- I remember wanting proactive. And I remember like asking my parents. And my parents being like, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Don't... I love my parents. But like when it comes to acne, don't be like my parents. Yeah. <laughs> right now, for our podcast listeners, you can get an exclusive offer only available by going to proactive.com slash Nick. With this exclusive podcast only offer, you will receive their free Proactive's on-the-go bag, which features their tea sewn oil absorber, body acne wipes, and green tea moisturizer. Close to $100 value. Ooh. 
There's also a 60-day money-back guarantee, so don't wait and go to Proactive.com slash Nick to get this podcast-only offer. Again, go to Proactive.com slash Nick to order and get clear skin for the win. I, I also lo- love how you you have this uh, ability where you, uh, like you, you're very honest about, I mean, it seems like you, you that, how do I describe, like, you're honest about the fact that people that you interact in your your life, it doesn't always have to be an intimate connection. In fact, people you interact with will serve a purpose in your life, like the maitre of the host at, yeah. a, <laughs> yeah. at a restaurant. And it yeah. comes across as kind of almost superficial, but it's like, it's just a reality of like accepting that certain people come and go in your life yeah. and that's okay. And I really, I quite liked that perspective. Well, you get that when you get older too. The nice thing is like, Look, now I'm 50. If I wrote, if I had written this book when I was 40, it would be a different kind. It would be a different book. It would. I wouldn't have been as honest actually at 40. Now I, I feel I can look back on myself with more affection. I wouldn't have had the ability to look back. I, I think you know you're too close to it. And now I can say in the book and I can talk about how good looking I was in my 20s without sounding ridiculous or so full of myself because people excuse it because of where, because that's not the case anymore. So I can kind of have fun with, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But when you're a little further away from it, I think you can get away with more and you realize that yeah, people have come in and out of your lives. You 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 have more to look at. More of the, your story has unfolded, right? And like a wedding, I you know you don't realize it when you're younger. And and I'm I'm talking young, young. Like you're tw- when your friends start getting married the first time, they uh, <laughs> often time it's the last time you see them. A lot of times you don't realize it, but I'm like, now I'm like, oh, it's the wedding. Let's go say goodbye to so-and-so. <laughs> you know, it depends on the level of relationship you have, but a lot of those college friends, it's all of that stuff afterwards. It's like you're kind of all se- celebrating what you'd had before and then moving on to your new life. And so often we don't see people after it's so true. they I get mean, married. I th- still see my friends, but it changes. My, my best friends, we still call each other best friends and i look forward uh uh to when i go home in the holidays of like um hanging out with them but that's it like that's like three times a year we used to hang out five times a week we would talk to each other every day yeah. they have their kids in their lives it is drastically different our that's friendship great. is mostly based off of nostalgia in the past and knowing that if we needed to we would be there for them but yeah. we never really have to. right <laughs> <laughs> i know nostalgia gets a little gets old fast at least for me i'm like i can't talk about these stories anymore <laughs> I can't. Like, I, it's, I don't want to. I don't want to live. I don't want to. You know. Yeah. That thing that makes sense. One of my favorite lines. Uh, I mean, you talked about when I mean, you were joking about how hot you were when you were younger. Gary had this great line. It was in your when you got bumped up to business class, and you were wearing a sh- I don't know shorts oh, yeah. and a t shirt. Here he goes. I realized later in life that. I was wearing the best thing possible, and that was a twenty-year-old body. <laughs> yeah, because I was. What a I great was, line! I was self-conscious was such... that I wasn't dressed properly to yeah. be in business class. I was in like shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah and, and I was I, like, yeah. you look back, be like, everyone was just like, "Who's the hot twenty-year-old?" Yeah. That was such a great line. I always want to tell younger people, like, this is as hot as you're going to be. Enjoy it. Like, <laughs> right? Stop like, hating yourself. I know. It's the other thing that I say, too. I'm like, stop wanting to be older. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. You perverse. Said like, it's, yes. like, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> I spent so much of my life wanting to be older and taken seriously, whatever that meant. I, in my <laughs> brain, I was like, I need to be taken seriously. I don't know what the fuck I thought I needed to be taken so <laughs> goddamn seriously for. But it was always like, I need to be taken seriously as a writer or, or this kind of idea that I, I, I needed to present myself more as a person of substance or something. So I didn't seem, you know, I feel like, that. like this, well, yeah. <laughs> like this thing, thing. It never really changes. Yeah. As you get older, you will accomplish more and you'll like your work your way up, but it's different than you imagined when you were younger, right? The recognition, I think, and what it would feel like, because I think definitely like as you get older, it's just like, you, I, when I was younger, you were like, oh, I want to have this job and make this certain amount of money and do these things and, and get the recognition or whatever. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I did that. And I never really appreciated it when it first happened. It was just part of the grind or life. And it's great, but it wasn't like they're going to – you imagine when you're younger, it was going to be this moment, you know, where you – 
get up and like thank you awards or whatever. And it was just like, yeah, he just got a, a job and no one really cared. I think, yeah, you know, for me though, like I, I wanted to be a writer for so long and I didn't know how to go about that or what that meant. And which I ironically write about in the, in the book. When I got my first job and it was a staff writing job on a sitcom that failed, you know, and, and um, but it was the very first job I ever got as a writer where, where it was like, and it was a message on my answering machine that I got the job and I came home. I, I was just waiting to find out if I got this job that I had gotten an interview for. And I've never felt a level of since then joy at any work related thing that, that has come, that has matched that. Um, because it was the first time I'd been seen. Yeah. I, it was the first time I felt seen in my, and I didn't realize it was the first time I literally felt seen like i'm seen as the thing that i want that i have presented myself it ha it's almost like it's like this hasn't been happening in my head because <laughs> you can you can really kind of make yourself feel like have i played this all out in my head is this never going to happen i call myself a writer i'm not you know but when somebody is saying like we are now hiring you as a writer you, you i'm this. seeing you as this thing you you have been and it was like yeah, I'll never forget. It was like final. You, you know, this sense of like finally, like like it's like it happened. Somebody saw me as the thing that I have been wanting to be, you know, for so long, and that's a powerful thing. No matter what it is you do, no matter what anybody does, if you pursue the thing that you're passionate about, or you know, it it will, and you finally get seen as that thing. It's a it's a good feeling. Yeah. I mean, it's great. And I think it's so fascinating how like, and I'm guessing what you made or offered or your, your status was bottom of the barrel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it all meant so much more oh, yeah, yeah. It for was, that very reason. Yeah, it was, but it was like, it was the beginning of everything, but it was like, but I was a writer. I could actually say, yeah. you know, this, you know, yeah. And it was, yeah. Just to be seen. Life's funny that way because you just never, I mean, and I'm bad. I'm bad at being present. I'm bad at being in the moment. And I know that most of my regrets in life, if I have them as I get older, will not, will, will never enjoying whatever that moment was in the moment that it happened. Yeah. You know, also, as you get older, you might find that things that are regrets stop being regrets. Well, yeah. You know I mean, I mean? That's the thing. I don't have a ton of regrets in that regard of like, oh, I should have said this or done this differently. Because there might be things like I wish I would have, but I, that's what I mean. The only regret will be just whatever it was, just not wanting it to change or, or wishing it would go away or wanting something different. But cause there was always like, you know what? That was an interesting, like, I wish I would have just been more present. And I think that's something I, I struggle with. And like, I don't know, like appreciating that moment as much as, cause you go, you were, you appreciate it later in life. Yeah. To like, like, wow, I really soak in this thing. I, I, I just dismiss moments sometimes. I just, I'm always on to the next. The I'm next always. Moment. I get that. Too. I can be like that too, yeah. by the way. We, Brad and I have gone on vacation sometimes and he's like, there's something wrong with you. Cause we went to, I remember we were in like Thailand and he's like, what are you doing? And I was on a computer in the thing in Thailand researching our next trip. I was like, I want to go. I read, I just heard about this <laughs> hotel and it's, and it's like, why are you looking at a hotel in Italy while we're in Thailand or something? I'm like, cause just cause I thought in the summer, you know, it's the idea, like, <laughs> yeah. This yeah. crazy kind of thing. I like. I know. I'm insane. I can't stop like that feeling of like. Yeah. So speaking of you and Brad traveling, when Brad and I, Brad and I talked about this a little bit, but you guys have a new show coming. Yeah, out, yeah. Uh, and it's going to be you and Brad traveling the world. I, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it more now, having read your, your oh. book. Before I was like, oh, it's based on Brad's Instagram, but your uh, neuroses when it comes to googling other things, and now knowing you a little bit and Brad, and like I think that's going to make for a fun dynamic yeah it'll be i'm looking forward to it too i don't really know what it's going to be i think we're just going to go and so you guys just be, be you. ourselves yeah which seems to be uh entertaining yeah <laughs> <laughs> i hope so you know i never thought of it in those terms when brad started doing those instagram stories about us on vacation in italy and people were responding to it as as it being entertaining i was like really <laughs> like i'm like okay like that's just how we are uh, when do you guys start shooting it then the new year. Oh, that's fun. And yeah. then it'll come out? I think in the summer. Okay. How do you feel about Brad flirting with Nick so much on online? Oh, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think it's, it's, it's super sweet and cute. Brad's the best. Yeah. Brad is the best. He's, yeah. this is a guy in a confident, 
marriage. Yeah, secure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do. We talk a lot. Rochelle, uh, Rochelle gives me a very hard time about sometimes we were recently talking about dating younger people. How many years older are, are you than Brent? 11? 11. Is 11 too much? No, 11's great. No, but uh, <laughs> Rochelle recently suggested to me that... Uh, well, we had a caller who thought she might have like a fetish about older guys. And then she was... Oh, yeah. I think I... Kind yeah. Of, and okay. it was like... Then I was like, oh, like how, how much older? She's like, oh, you know, he's in his mid 30s. She was 26. I'm no, like, she said late 30s, 40s, and okay. she's 26. Okay. So like 11, 13 years. And I'm just like, wait, like just, be, you know, I don't think that that's much older. And you you're married to brad he's 11 years younger what yeah. was that like for you when you when you guys got together uh, well he was 20 yeah he was 23 and i was 34 and he looked young too for 23 okay. i was just like he looked young uh but i looked younger too because we kind of have young looking faces um but yeah 11 years it was definitely like were you self-conscious I wasn't tremendously self-conscious, no. No, I wasn't self-conscious about it. I think any older I would have been. You know, I was at a different place in my life than he was at 23. Um, I was already, you know, established in my career at 34. And he was kind of didn't know what he wanted to do yet. He was in a, in a more unformed stage of his adulthood. But it's never been an issue at all ever the uh, the only time it ever was that i ever thought about it was brad did a reality show he, brad was on bravo for a while and he had a spinoff and his show it's a brad brad world i appeared on and i never had been seen or been on people knew him and that he had a boyfriend from rachel zoe but i never wanted to be mentioned on camera or seen on camera because i was very protective of my career as being an independent thing and i don't want to be associated with reality tv now of course it's like so different the way it is but then it was just something i you know i was like i don't want to be a, 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 in a part of this you enjoy it but when i was finally seen and then i you know was on the show people were like i was like how old is brad's boyfriend oh my god i didn't like i was like what oh. like we're only 11 years apart these like what's the big deal but i think obviously people had a perception of like also brad looks even younger than he is so they they probably pictured you know somebody that was his age you know exactly so i had never thought of it until then and i was like that was the only time for a minute i was kind of like people were horrible <laughs> like the way they were so mean to me but you know that everyone was, has an opinion yeah, I, everybody is I, now have, like, i have found yeah yeah but yeah i mean people will i mean i i Get Curtis, I get teased well, a lot. I, can I defend myself? Why a do you get bit? teased? I, I'm older, and like, what are you? Thirty watt nine. Okay. I've like thought about myself. I'm like, why do I give Nick such a hard time about it? And playful. I, I'm not. No, but yeah, it's yeah. play. It's all totally it's fine. fun. It's, it's all fun. But like women, we struggle with like the idea that we lose value the older that we get, and yeah, so the gay idea. And kind of have that too. Oh really? I, yeah, they do. Oh okay. So if the fact that like you know like successful older men only date young women in their early 20s like i guess triggers me of like women still have like stuff to offer you know in their 30s <laughs> yeah and and 40s and 50s yes, and, exactly, and whatever exactly. but but i go but, on dates with girls in their 30s have you ever dated anybody your own age yes okay uh recently relatively okay yeah all right so it's not like just a thing of like you would only but it's it's it, i I absolutely, re, re, relatively recently, I've dated people my age. I often, like my sweet spot is probably late 20s. And then there are like people outliers who are like uh, early 30s. And then there are people outliers who are like early 20s. Okay. Does that make sense? Outliers. Outliers okay. were like, I'm more often than not, I seem to meet women in their mid to late 20s. Okay, that's fine. I mean, and then like, yes. And then sometimes I'll meet a, a, a young woman who I'm like, how old are you? I'm like, huh, okay, well, we can hang out for a while, but like, this isn't going to go. When anywhere. are you going to be 40? In September. Okay. Yeah. Well, enjoy the summer. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, because then it's going to be, be suicidal. A, then it's going to be different. Yeah, no. I know. You're like in your 30s, but then once you're in your 40s and somebody is, and, and she's 22, then it might start to be like, I'm already so, you can I, be your we'll dad. We'll no longer 
talk about my age in 10 months. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be off limits? Off limits. No, <laughs> it's completely fine. off limits. It's completely fine. It will be Believe completely me. off limits. No, no. Uh, there'll be no no mention of it whatsoever. Yeah, Brad's, Brad's 40 something now. It looks great, looks great too. Yeah, he looks great. He's like more buff than ever before. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He, you know, he works out. He works out a lot. A lot. And yeah. he's got his like, he's like buff. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't notice it as much until for Halloween. What did he go? Was Jennifer Lopez or something? Oh yes, that was oh, amazing. I was I, like, I was, you look like a linebacker. I'm like, I didn't know you were so big. I, what if he's in a dress? In he a was like, Mur. I didn't. I was like, who is Brett hanging out with? And I'm like, oh shit, that's Brett. I know. It was very like, yeah, that was. Really it was. Uh, scary. That, <laughs> that was, was really scary. Poor Jennifer Lopez. Um, and any, we, we're gonna play this game with you called "Do You Know Me." Uh, we like okay. to play, but before we do, do you have any? Uh, final takeaways if you want to share to your audience, whether it's about your book or any, you, you seem, I, I, you seem obviously really good at giving a lot of perspective about your life that I think is very relatable. And what else can, can you share with our audience? Oh, well, no, thanks. That's, that's nice. I'm glad that you say that, you know, but if it is something you ever feel that, you know, when you're kind of lost at a certain point in your life and you can't figure it out, I think, um, check out my book cause it might speak to you. It really, it yeah. really, it really would. It's, I think it's very, yeah. Do you mind if I cancel? Also New York times bestseller, by the way, flex. Yeah. Nice job. I know. What, what is next for you, uh, in your professional career other than making TV with, with Brad? Yeah. Make TV with Brad. I'm going to write another book. You are still on family guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I'm working on some other stuff. That seems to be more than you need. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to, before we let you go, we're going to play okay. a fun little game called, do you know me? Okay, okay. It's real simple. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to insert your name. Rochelle and I are going to guess the truth behind this. Don't answer right away. Give me an example. Don't answer. Can Gary name the last bachelorette? And we're going to guess whether you can or not. <clears throat> uh, this is a, that's a pretty basic one. Sometimes they're more um, general. If there's a fun anecdotal story behind it, I feel like you'd be good at uh, answering that. Okay. But we're going to guess who knows Gary better. Okay. You ready? Do I participate? Will you eventually answer the question after Rochelle and I will debate as to why we think Gary, for example, I understand. Knows her, doesn't know the last bachelorette. Okay. Question number one Can Gary name the last bachelorette? Well, we know he doesn't watch the show. He doesn't watch. He watches Real Housewives. But he is in tune to pop culture. Yeah. And I think you'd have to live under a rock not to know the first name of the current bachelor. i'm gonna say no i think it's out of sight out of mind i think he's got if you watch the real housewives there's like six different ones you don't have room in your mind all i know is he just knows the name okay yeah rochelle's right yes i don't there's no room for that there's you no have room. You they know don't how many they don't exist <laughs> you, <laughs> you have don't m- watch the show they don't it's exist true <laughs> it's like it's like i don't watch the real housewives of of um, Potomac. So those wi- right. if one of those women were sitting there, they wouldn't exist. I'd be like, hello, lady from the supermarket. I don't care. You'd be like, she's on. I'm like, I don't know. It's I don't watch it. If it was Ramona Singer, I'd be like, Ramona's there. What's she doing out there? Can I talk to her? Oh my God. You know, that yes. she re- exists to me. Yes. So it's the same thing with, yeah, the Bachelor. Like, they don't exist to me. It's like sports so- for me. The only guy <laughs> I know is Tom Brady. Everyone else is just a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. In that, but I am a big pop culture junkie. So there are things things that I do know that I don't watch, but that's not one of them. Like, I'm even impressed. if we gave you three names, you wouldn't be able to pick? All right, try. Let's try. But I don't uh, know. Jojo, uh, Becca, or Hannah? I couldn't pick them. Wow. I'm going to guess Becca because it sounds like a name. It does sound like a name. Well, they were all three Bachelorettes, but Hannah's the most recent. Yeah, no. Wow. <laughs> sorry. She just, I'm impressed. Uh, pre- I'm sorry, Nick. She just presented at the CMA Awards. You didn't watch? <laughs> so eight, yeah. No. Question number two. Okay. Has Gary ever fainted? <laughs> it seems on brand. It seems on brand. I feel like he would describe himself as fainting, <laughs> but never actually has fainted. I think he's worked himself up. He hasn't eaten right. He hasn't drank but water. Wait, there and was, he fainted. There was the whole thing about faking being sick, which also, by the way, makes you... Oh, he fakes being he, sick. You tell a story that there's a monster inside there. I'm a good liar. <laughs> I have a really. Was a very, let's just say I could take I could take a secret to my grave. It's oh, a very elaborate easily. thing he did to his mother at a young age of well, how old were you? 
Oh gosh, probably about nine. It was it was like this Wait, is a tell little it, monster. Oh, you're re- it's just it's just I I pretended I was sick for a very long period. Of Ferris time. Bueller's Day Off, like a lab, like it was. I, I so much that I convinced myself that I was sick. Oh, it's like wow. that kind of thing. I'm just gonna still like say no. He actually pregnancy. never fainted. Where he literally just fell over He's and a hundred percent faded and fell over. First of all, Rochelle, you're really funny. I love you. I love the way you've got me down. Like the whole thing. He didn't drink enough water. He didn't hydrate. There's a right, thing. He got caught up. That's not how it happened. Okay. But I did faint once. But you're so you also kind of are you're you're close in in what would be getting me. But I, I did faint once. Not the reasons that you said. I'm also a kind of person that if like I I was taking my dog out and coming back into the house i tripped and fell on and i hit my head on concrete like and slammed my head back and fell backwards and really hard and then i ignored it and i pretended it didn't Mm -hmm. happen and then later i was i was in the bathroom and i just fainted (gasps) like i just i I woke up on the floor having and then i i like brad wasn't home this was like over 10 years ago or something he was in new york or whatever and i was like i think i should probably go to the either the emergency room or go to bed (laughs) i was like i'm gonna go to bed (laughs) i'm gonna ignore it you went to bed but i did and i and i'm did you have a concussion i don't know i must have had something but i just ignored it i i pretend it like (laughs) It's fine. Yeah, I'm I was like, it's fine. The OCD so the, didn't like. So I did faint. No, I don't know why it didn't then. Yeah. Rochelle, going to two... an emergency room, I'd have to have cut off my hand to go to an emergency <laughs> really? room. Really? Yeah. After watching sense. ER for all those, I'm not sitting in an emergency room with gunshot victims saying I I hit my head while I took my dog out yeah. and w- it spend the whole night there. Okay. So I fainted. Rochelle's up two nothing. This is, this is very unprecedented. Rare. I like this, this game. Is unprecedented. Ter- I can't talk. <laughs> This unprecedented territory uh, yeah. question number three has gary ever been an unpaid intern these are great questions rochelle thank you <sighs> i feel like i should a know break this into the entertainment industry an unpaid intern yeah i mean they don't really do that anymore they usually pay interns now thank god but back then i think i think he did i never no i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say yeah he did whatever it took yeah, but he's no. also oh, prideful. Oh, good for you. Very prideful. I think he'd, he he th- he would he, think it's beneath him. He needed him. to make money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you have me as prideful beneath <laughs> me. I never did it. I, I, it's not beneath me, but I, I never had an opportunity to do it. I'm not saying it is beneath you or you recognize that now, but would have 19-year-old Gary thought it's beneath him? Probably. Okay. How did you get your first writing job? I just, you know, by the time I moved out here, I was ready to start writing. I moved out here when I was 28. I just started writing spec scripts is what you write. And I I knew, I I sent one to an agency. I sent them to an agency and somebody, a friend of mine from New York was like, I know an agency, an agent at that agency. And they read it and she represented me and I got my first job. It kind of happened unusually fast for me. Once I started, I mean, I did all my all of my service industry jobs in New York, but once I moved, and I paid all my dues there, but once I moved here, a few months after I moved here, I was working in TV. Wow. I know, and I and I haven't stopped. I can only talk about it now because it's been over 20 years because I never wanted to jinx anything. You know, uh, I would always be like, don't just keep eye on the product, keep looking forward. I never look back. It's always like forward, forward, forward. And this was the first time writing this book. Maybe kind of look back and be like, I guess I can talk about it now because it's been 24 years of working constantly, so I'm not going to jinx it, you know? That's great. So wait, two one, making a comeback. Yeah, two one. Has Gary taken a Zumba class? Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Oh damn it! No, but it's a good. That would be a good guess. I would. I would have guessed if I had just been listening. I feel like to you'd me, really enjoy I it. I would have guessed yes for me. Uh, yeah. I would take one, but I right? have never taken okay. one. Okay. Oh, with the housewives, come on, Still that'd be two fun. One. Does <clears throat> Gary know? The oh yeah, does Gary know the Pythagorean theorem? No, Say it I, again. Does Gary know the Pythagorean theorem? Do I'm not not saying that right. <laughs> no, you just did. You just yeah, did. You Pythagorean uh, theorem. Okay. I, f- I do I know this? I know. I I know it. I know. I'm because this is not about me. Does Gary know it? Uh the look on his face is making me say no. It's like you can do this, Gary. I'm gonna say yes for fun. You can do it. Something square. Yes. Thing. No. <laughs> no. Plus or minus. No, that, you're thinking the quadratic there, oh, but uh, just it's simple. Triangles. B- yeah. Pythagorean. Th- I don't know it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yeah. 
Oh, good. Wow, look at you, math. I was terrible in math. The quadratic equation is what? Plus or minus? Yeah, yeah. Square root of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 Over two or something? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, So still 2-1. 2-1. I can't win, but I can tie. Oh, I don't know. Is Gary left-handed? My gut's saying yes. He's a creative. I'm left-handed. I'm left-handed. Come on, Nick. I'm going to say no just so I can tie because okay. it's a 50-50 guess. Okay. No. Oh! I'm not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right-handed. Jesus. Well. Oh, wow. No, uh, I'm right-handed. No, they used to, well, I went to Catholic school and they, you know. They, they would make you. No, they didn't make, I mean, I'm not, you're not old, that old where they, but my mom also went to Catholic school and they would make, at that age, they would try to switch <laughs> the kids who were left-handed. I was the first generation where they allowed kids to be left-handed. Could you imagine? A real pioneer. Is such a thing? No, it's They were like, mo- no, you can't use your left hand. Is it, is it true or just a, 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 a wise tale that's how like a lot of people would have a stutter? Oh. From trying to have your hands changed, like uh, there, the movie The King's Speech. Oh yeah, uh, with King, he had a stutter, had and a stutter. and they, and again, it's a movie, so who knows if it's actually true? But it sounded very believable. That the psychology behind, like at a young age, being mm-hmm. made to write right handed yeah. when you're left handed, it it was a a reason why people would develop a stutter. Oh wow, that makes sense. Anything that forces you to be your brain, how you're not, not the way to work, the way you how want you it, aren't. Yeah how you aren't forms i i think forces some kind of anxiety to manifest itself either in a stutter or some other oh. kind of way you know because it's it's your you know your the anxiety of not being who you are oh man yeah good right it explains my anxiety were you made to write right-handed no 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 i'm just talking about other stuff oh, okay <laughs> yeah yeah totally. well sure I mean, that's where we all get it from. But, uh, uh, Gary, that was a fun game. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, uh, Michelle. Where welcome. can people find you all over the world? At Gary Gennetti is my Instagram. Um, yeah. So, uh, and and then, don't forget to buy or read or listen. I s- recommend yeah. listen. It, oh, it's, thanks. It's, uh, yeah, if you, the audio book. Yeah. For the people listening to this podcast, we all know you like to, to listen to things on your phone. Uh, uh, check out Gary's book. Do you mind if I cancel? Um, it's great. Thanks, Nick. New York bestseller. It's just a le- great lesson on life. Yeah, thanks. Do you mind if I cancel? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I definitely don't. Yeah. <laughs> Please cancel. Do you find, yeah, that, people. No, I have, love that you, you mind. See, no, now I, find, I mean, it depends. Okay. I've never, I'll never mind ever. Me ever. Na- not, there's not a thing in the world. In my best, anything, I would never, it, it would be, it's always the best thing to get. Oh my God, thank you. I don't have to go. Yeah, really? yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And if you get the worst text, is like, I might have to cancel. Can I let you know in an hour? It's like, let me. It's too late now. You've you've already opened the door that this might not be happening. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Tonight seems like it's not good for you or whatever about it. I'm totally fine. Yeah. I'm like, once you've opened the door that this might not be happening, there's no going back. Well, note to self: yeah. if I make plans with Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll pl- I won't cancel though. Weirdly, it's like a game of chicken. Mm. You know, usually I'm like, let's see. But I, I don't I don't usually tend to make plans anymore that I would cancel. So anything I, I make a plan You don't to do, feel the pressure to say yes to things you don't want to do. Correct. Mm. correct. And on that note, it's a very important life lesson. Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to give us five stars on iTunes if you uh, so desire. Uh, we appreciate you listening. We will see you again on Monday. Have a great day. <laughs>